involving in the development of the basic development strategy and the strategic plan through their uh, uh, contributions um, of their expertise. So, uh, Ms. Rodgers uh, is the uh, first secretary from the Australian Embassy. She managed the uh, regional water resources uh, program for the uh, Greater Megon sub-region, including the support to the MRC. So to the MRC. And Dr. Anulak is our chief strategy and partnership officer sitting in the captain office of the CEO. Um, so Dr. Anulak is managing the, uh, uh, the strategic direction Amani, communication, etc., etc., and then Dr. Sona is the chief uh, chief um, uh, environment uh, fish, uh, sorry, environment uh, officer, um, known best for his fishery expertise and the environmental expertise, and he's very critical about the um, the, the safeguarding of the uh, futures of the Mekong Basin while trying to balance the development of the basin. And then last but not least, Dr. Tim Lee. Dr. Tim Lee is our Chief River Basin Planner, as has introduced, who has great experience in the development of the uh, basin. So he's got already two stages of the BDS, as well as Dr. Lalak and Dr. Sona. So here with us today, these are the people. So Dr. Okay, so maybe Maybe can I uh, invite uh, each of you, of course, except Dr. Tim Lee, to briefly uh, uh, let us know about what you did or the uh, uh, during the development of the BDS and the SPs, or any particular issue that you want to tell head on to the audience. Maximum two minutes, starting from uh, Dr. Nalan's please. <coughs> Thank you, Sophia. Uh, Good afternoon, I think, uh, Ambassadors, Excellencies, Mr. CEO. Um, well, maybe I would not bore you with what I did, but uh, maybe just, just to highlight how ambitious, how instrumental the new strategy is. So my colleague, Dr. Lee, said that uh, there was a shift from the previous strategy to this strategy. And that shift is very important. It's a shift from what the traditional MRC role, which is monitoring, planning, knowledge acquisition, studies, etc., about the basic, but really to support member countries in terms of coordinating water infrastructure. That's one. Second, proactively planning from a basic line point of view. Third, to really uh, uplift the cooperation between the four member countries, first and foremost, but also, very importantly, to, for the first time, I think, bring the upper and the lower basin much closer together, because we believe that the Lansang Mekong Basin can only be managed when the six countries work together closely. So, so this is this is sort of the new key strategic direction and new um, strategy for the Mekong, and we're very happy that it was approved and uh, set direction by the Council uh, of Ministers and uh, ready to be implemented. And uh, I will come back to how it would be implemented to be successful. And your role, I think your role, especially development partners sitting here. Uh, supported by, of course, the Secretariat uh, staff, my colleagues uh, at, the, at the back, uh, how this strategy should be implemented successfully. So I will come back to this. So I, I would like, I'm very happy to have this, uh, before this is the, my, my second also formulation of the Basin Development Strategy of the MRC. So this is uh, very different from the past one. I think uh, one important thing, we, we, we have a very uh, good information from our uh, State of the Basin Report uh, 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 confirming or redoing or assessing the condition of the environment, the socio-economic 
climate change and cooperation very well. And also the BDS has been developed based on not only the past and current trend of the basin, but also the future trend and outlook of the basin from different, different information from different uh, what we call scenario assessment of different study to look at the, the future trend. So this past and future trend very well addressed in in this uh, current BDS. And uh, I, I would like to repeat again uh, what has been said by Dr. Tim Lee and Dr. Anulak. This is a, a whole basic, a whole basic and whole actor strategy is so important. It's not a massy uh, uh, strategy as the previous uh, strategy. And, uh, and it's responsive, responsive. It's not the active strategy. So responsive that Dr. Amala said is more uh, proactive regional planning and uh, uh, coordination of operation management. Uh, this is so important that we are not reactive, we are very proactive and in order to, uh, to balance between the cost and benefit of the development. And this is so important. And a very important point also, the first time we link our strategy, we integrate the, the UN uh, SDG, uh, Sustainable Development Indicator, in the to water management development of the basin and also with the gender uh, conference also. So this is so, so, so important. And uh, very important, first time that this strategy have a very good balance between uh, 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 water infrastructure development uh, for, for, for regional economic growth and environment protection management for social security. So this is so 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 unique and important that a good balance. So how how what is this balance mean? I, I would like uh, I would like to tell them all. Thank you. Dr. Anulak, I'm going to answer already some questions from the floor of the Thank you. Thank you, CEO and Ambassadors, Your Excellencies. Today, it is a great pleasure to be here for the launch of the Basic Development Strategy strategic plan and uh, a wonderful honour to be here as part of the panel as well. Australia has uh, worked on water resource management issues in the region for more than 20 years now and uh, with the, the MRC Australia has been a, a long-standing development partner. Australia and I think all development partners would uh, say that we have appreciated the extensive analysis and consultation that's gone in the development of the Basin Development Strategy. And I had the wonderful opportunity to be part of that consultation process when Australia was the chair of the Development Partners Group through till June last year that has uh, now uh, passed over to the EU as the current chair of the Development Partners Group. I think as uh, others have, have said here that the uh, Basin Development Strategy uh, really links with the sustainable development goals and is really focused uh, more so now on the proactive planning uh, of the, the basin uh, involving the six basin countries. And to realise the basin vision and the BDS outcomes, everyone will have to play their part. MRC and member countries and dialogue partners, as well as uh, civil society, research organisations, private sector. The successful implementation of the BDS and the strategic plan is important if there is to be inclusive and sustainable development of the Mekong Basin. And Australia looks forward to continuing to work with MRC in the implementation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your meaningful sort of um, introduction as well as uh, setting the stage for us to move forward with the uh, extensive discussion. So, oh, so cheers. Um, maybe we should go to the floor. Yeah, I think I'll just get the discussion rolling. Let us now open the floor for easy questions. Sorry. You can ask any difficult question, you know. All 
Thanks very much, uh, Kim Gab from the Metro Region Futures Institute. Um, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on, on, on uh, when you talk about the inclusion of the upper parts of the basin, um, how is that going to work? What does that actually look like within the context of the, of the strategy? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe we can have one more before we... Okay. Thank you again for the MSC for hosting this, uh, uh, this event today and also the panelists. In fact, uh, when we watched the video, we were not just teaming, and this is eye opening. And one of the community leaders raised that uh, beside the climate change, one of the factors that affect the quality and water level of the Mekong River was the death and construction by the six riparian states that stretched along the river. I believe, uh, of course, this has been discussed in the past. Maybe uh, some of the, uh, one of the panels or some of the panels can, can reiterate again what are the, uh, the steps taken, for example, so that uh, measures be taken to control on the uh, maybe the debt construction by the, uh, all the repairing state and uh, legal position. Because I, I think it's quite relevant. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so let's take one more. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I wonder how this strategy interacts with the already existing strategies and initiatives which seems to be white light, such as the Lanskan Mekong initiative, Lower Mekong initiative, and so on. Okay, thank you very much for uh, all uh, very hard questions. So, I, like what I, okay. I, I will take some, and then uh, my dear colleagues will take some. Uh, thank you very much, I think, Kim's question, and also uh, the, the, the last question. Uh, so, with respect to the upper part, so when we mentioned upper part, I think everybody knows we're talking about the giant neighbor up north which is China, and uh, related to your question is the uh, new or relatively new cooperation framework such as the Mekong Lansang uh, framework and other such framework such as the uh, US Mekong or other uh, etc. So with respect to Kim's question, I think maybe three things uh, the new strategy talks about uh, how to make these linkages uh, stronger. Number one, uh, in the strategic priority number five, it talks about from now until 2030, there should be sufficient clarity about the roles, functions, and mandate of each organization. For example, the MRC, we think that our mandate is very clear. You know, we have our core functions, which is monitoring, supporting countries, planning, uh, reporting, uh, assessment, facilitating cooperation on the use of the water. Right? Now, if you look at LMC, uh, what is their core function? Are they a cooperation program of, say, different projects? Are they going to venture into, say, MRC quote-unquote territories, such as data sharing, such as monitoring, such as uh, other kind of technical work? So these kind of things should be clear. Right? So that's the first one. The second one we have in the strategy um, to build up more closer technical institutional cooperation. So for example, we have these MRC expert groups. In the strategy, it is talk about to link with China and to some extent Myanmar, you should expand these expert groups to include Chinese and Myanmar representatives to work together on these expert groups, such as uh, basin-wide planning, uh, proactive planning included, uh, data sharing, etc., joint study, so that's number two. And finally, um, because the MRC has been well established in terms of our data information sharing platform with contribution by member countries, with support from development partners, and the LMC is thinking about a information sharing platform as well. So 
in the future, there must be some kind of connection and integration. It, it, it is okay to have different platforms of data sharing. The MRC does not have to have a sole right, uh, data sharing platform. As long as you do not duplicate the works of the member countries, you do not waste resources, and you build the system in such a way that they are connected. So, so we hope that the, in the next five, ten years, these three points will be clear. And we, we want to take that. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, questions on the uh, water level fluctuation. Actually, uh, our video has uh, noticed very well, so as I presented to, uh, to you earlier, on the uh, state of the basins and our looks toward 2014. So, uh, water fluctuations are caused by uh, development of upstream uh, dam in China, and also uh, now we develop also in Laos, and also uh, uh, multiple uh, dams in the tributaries also causing uh, some fluctuation. So, we we, we were know this, uh, that's why, uh, as Dr. Sunan mentioned, we balance development and uh, uh, environmental protections, especially on flow. When on flow, we work on priority number one to address water flow and quality, not only flow alone, but also water quality. And as I show, uh, water flow is now is in the yellow uh, stage, so we need to improve, improve it to uh, green. And how to improve it? We need to, to work on the uh, moving from just planning to operational management. It means that we need to coordinate uh, all water infrastructure, including dams developments, and also other development like irrigations that, that have also multiple effects on the uh, water level fluctuation. So, so we work to work on this, and then we also work on the proactive regional planning that look into uh, future developments and the demand of water in the basins. Now, for the next questions on the on on, on how can other strategy have been in, incorporated, especially allies. So, uh, and uh, so I have highlighted only uh, the major ones uh, in my presentations, but LMI also included the Korean, the Korean uh, also initiative also included in the basic uh, development strategy. Uh, if you, you refer to it, it's all included uh, over there. So uh, that's it, my uh, answer. Thank you. Um, so to just in relation to this, um, I got a question from a um, friend sent it to me here just now who follow us on Facebook, but they don't send it to Facebook. Um, in relation to Dr. Alak's uh, response to the, um, one of the questions saying about the inclusion of uh, Chinese and uh, Myanmar's representative in the expert group. They were asking how about the inclusion of uh, CSO representative. Does um, Amasi has any plan? to engage in whatever way. So, okay, so before we take the floor, the more questions from the floor, maybe the mother can, can, can respond to that. Yes, uh, so it has been practiced that the uh, members of, uh, say, academics or development partners or uh, CSOs have been invited uh, on an ad hoc basis to our expert groups. So uh, the decision point is just that the secretary will propose and that the chair of those expert groups would uh, would approve and invite them. Uh, they're, they, they're, they're not yet uh, standing members of the expert groups because uh, the expert groups are currently the uh, expert from the fly agencies and the National Mekong Committees from the uh, member countries. Uh, and, but uh, there is further vision to uh, explore uh, the participation of uh, non-government in the expert group, in the new strategy. Okay, thank you very much. So, can we have some more questions from our... Okay, uh, Ambassador Satya. Our running microphone. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much and thank you for this event and for the strategy. Congratulations. I have a couple of short questions. One would be... Do you still have some elements that were discussed, you found them relevant, but finally they didn't make the strategy. And the second question would be, where, 
what were the areas that was the most difficult to agree upon? Okay, you get a question, right? Maybe one more. Can we have one more? Okay. So it's quite heavy on the right side, but we the boat will sink. Okay, please. Thank you. I have no question. I just have a comment, if I may. Thank you. I'm I'm Sarah Sakins. I'm the resident coordinator of the UN Country Team here in Lao and Yang. And I just wanted to express my gratitude for previous meetings that we've had in the run up to the finalization of the strategic plan, and say that we, uh, as, as I just wanted to inform everybody else, that we are having further conversations with the MRC to look at how the UN Country Team can support some of the Lao specific implementation aspects because we have a complementary role to that of the MRC. And adding to that, what um, falls on, on the reformed UN development system is that we are actually also discussing with our neighbor country teams. And as a second step, we would want to see how we can have a joint discussion with the MRC to see how country teams in the region can actually help MRC pull in one and the same direction in terms of supporting the implementation of relevant pieces, largely also because we're all steered by the Sustainable Development Goal and its indicators. And in this case, of course, as they're incorporated, in the case of now, with the nationalized indicators, the 238 uh, nationally approved uh, SDG indicators. So, congratulations and thank you very much for this much the stronger conversation with the UN in country. Thank you very much for the complimentary. We appreciate that. So, could we just take further question, Dr. Sonam? Thank, thank you very much for, for a very good question about the transitional between uh, the previous strategic plan 2016-2020 and uh, now 2021-2025. I think uh, the the very one of the important uh, strategic priority we, we carry on from uh, 20, the last uh, 16, 20, 20 strategy to now is the strategy of uh, uh, filling the, the knowledge information data gap. So this, this, this is a long term perspective and uh, we, we continue to, to, to implement this uh, uh, strategy in this 2021-2025 uh, by, by having a very uh, clear uh, strategic approach. Uh, uh, before, before 2016, we don't have any uh, uh, approach, a good approach to filling this knowledge gap. During 2026-2020, we, we have updated and finalize our Mekong River Basin Indicator Framework with five dimensions environment, social, economic, climate change, cooperation. So, all these five dimensions have a very clear strategic indicator, assessment indicator, parameter, and, 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 and data requirement for each parameter and building up. And to implement this, uh, this uh, um, uh, Mekong River Basin Indicator Framework, we also developed and the JC also approved the data uh, acquisition and generation action plan a five year. So with this, we hope that we will close the knowledge gap expectedly by, by this five year strategy uh, period. And then we will have a, a full state of basic reporting uh, by uh, 2028, this is what we, we say 2023, uh, 2023 and 2028. So, so this we have a clear uh, approach. Thank you. Uh, I think if I hear all the sticking points during the strategy negotiation, I will be out of a job tomorrow. <laughs> Um, but to put it diplomatically, because you are diplomats, 
uh, there were tough discussion, I think, around the development of the floodplains. Uh, as you know, the floodplains in uh, the Mekong region is one of the biggest uh, storage, uh, natural storage in the basin. It, it acts as an ecosystem function, flood storage, all of these things, and this is being rapidly developed. So that has natural consequences for uh, you know, floods and drought in the Delta. So there were a tough discussion on that. The second tough discussion, I think, result around this shift from the MRC being a organization that supports studies, uh, monitoring, reporting, uh, technical advice, to a much more proactive role in terms of um, assisting countries with their water infrastructure coordination and operation. Because each country also are struggling with this, to put it uh, politely. Uh, and there's a lot of efforts inside the countries uh, to coordinate you know, with different developers, different operators, all of these things. And not to talk about transboundary issues. So there were, there were I think, uh, a lot of discussion on that. Um, and, uh, and then I think the third is the new developments with respect to the regional landscape. Uh, not only the MRC, I think also this is from our stakeholders and our development partners. Um, you know, the new landscape with the emergence of the Lansan Mekong Corporation, with the Mekong Basin being a geopolitical hotspot, which it has always been uh, throughout history. And, uh, but the added impetus of this, I think these were three, I think three uh, difficult conversations, but I think the, the strategy set clear direction on all three. I think we have a lot of questions for our three gentlemen and not yet for Rondes. Um, maybe I have one. And basically, to summarize from uh, the voice of the CSO, who was saying that it's a test of time to see whether the MRC and the member country can, you know, uh, uh, implement and realize the plan. But 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 basically, from the development partner perspective, you know, because the development partner is one of the important partner. Uh, to support the implementation, so I was wondering how, for example, the development partner can support the MRC and the member country can realize the implementation of the BDS and the SP to achieve the set priority and the actions. Thank you. <coughs> um, I would say the the five strategic priorities that are set out are really important and, uh, and interlinked to start with. The, um, and, and all the sort of equal and full attention. <clears throat> and uh, for example, the, the first strategic priority, I think uh, it's uh, clearly heard by, uh, by experts uh, in the region that the ecological function of the Mekong River system is under threat evidenced in the State of the Basin Report. And this fact can't be lost over. Uh, so how can Australia support and uh, develop partners? Uh, I think there's, there's three main areas uh, that development partners can be supporting, including Australia. One is in sharing uh, our own experiences and knowledge from our own uh, countries, water resource management and uh, cross-boundary uh, river basin management experiences. I think secondly would be in um, investing in, and partnering with the, the MRC and the, the member countries in uh, building capacity and, and seeing through the, the implementation of the, uh, the BDS and the, the strategic plan. And, and I think the, the last one uh, I guess river bank in season, river bank, erosion, etc. So my question is, how can the MRC improve the situation of the sediment reduction, or how to restore the sediment down to the pre dam condition? So perhaps um, Dr. Sukran, would you like to take that So two questions. I think 
Thank you. I, I will try. So it's very a very important question about how to to balance the the environment protection and the economic growth for the sustainability of the passive. So uh, I, I I think there is a, a free approach. I I listen to you. So uh, uh, we need a, a strong and active uh, uh, contribution of the implementation of this uh, of this. Uh, Basic development strategy by all the actors. So all actors mean uh, the, the upper, the lower, all the basic, and, and, and this is uh, very important. So uh, uh, the second one, uh, I think, uh, Doctor Anula also the question already uh, asked about uh, to strengthen the the the, um, the Mayor Mekong River Commission as a one organization, one organization. Uh, to to enable increase the cooperation, especially again with the Mekong Langsang uh, water and other other partner uh, for the purpose of the integrated uh, uh, management of the whole basin uh, uh, by 2030 is set by the the, the, the strategy. So uh, also to to ensure the adequate data sharing uh, so, so so important and also a good uh, uh, joint study and assessment and uh, have a common set of basic reporting and a common set of basic uh, uh, development strategy and also the, the third approach is to support the increasing national implementation of the core river basic management function and uh, the transition for the proactive regional planning and operation management processes that that embedded in the national uh, uh, planning, in the decision making of the country, and in the governance system of the country, uh, and also funded by the basic country. So this is so important to, to have sustainability. And uh, the second question is about about uh, uh, there is a lot of study assessment, and it found that there is a. a significant reduction of uh, uh, sediment flow to the, the Mekong Delta uh, through the Mekong River and including uh, our uh, Amar Citizen study and the question what is the solution, what is the optimal solution and uh, this is again, uh, it's been uh, discussed uh, by Tim Lee and Dr. Adula and uh, our colleague from Australia Basi that uh, 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 proactive regional planning and coordination of uh, uh, operation of the all the cascade down along the Mekong River and also tributary is so important in order to 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 uh, to ensure the sediment flow and uh, this is really have a, a good mitigation. Uh, uh, a measure by having a good uh, 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 sediment flow route from all the, 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 the dam on the mainstream and also the dam on the triple tree. So and, and coordination management of the dam for for water uh, flow, for sediment flow, for fish flow, fish migration is so important. Thank you. Okay, uh, so Tim, before we take forward, I think we, we've heard a lot about um, this sort of term. Um, Dr. Nalak said, I think the three of us mentioned about proactive regional planning. This is the role that the AMRC is set. But, but, but if you could um, uh, put that in much simpler, simple words, could you please explain what, what you mean by proactive regional planning and, and coordinated operation and management of these uh, infrastructures, water infrastructure. If you could also give us some example, I think that would be more enlightening. Yeah, thank you, Sukhya. Yeah. Um, so, if, if you go back to the 1950s and 60s, even 70s, there, there was a development consensus among the member countries, 
the development partners community, the UN, uh, about what the Mekong development was, which was to optimize water resources development for the protection of the delta in terms of floods, droughts, to give energy, to give agriculture, irrigation, to enhance navigation. And there were several projects that were planned, including large storage projects uh, that were planned. And these projects were not a Thai project, a Lao project, a Vietnamese project. It were, they were international projects, Mekong projects. Right? So, so, that, so that, in a sense, it was proactively identified, assessed, and suggested to countries. Um, because of regional instabilities and conflicts, a lot of those things did not happen. Since 1995, these, some of these projects enter into national plans, right? Lao National Plan, Thai National Plan, Cambodian National Plan, Vietnamese National Plan, Chinese National Plan, and they were implemented. And the role of the MRC will mostly react to planning, meaning we were trying our best to understand how these plants were going to disturb the river, bring changes, positive and negative, and try our best to mitigate the costs through our procedures, through our guidelines, etc. So some of those work are very good. You know, the countries have adapted their projects. For example, Saiburi was adapted, you know, following MRC recommendation. Don Samong was adapted, following recommendation from MRC and etc. etc. But uh, from other stakeholders, they say, well, that's not enough. Um, so by proactive planning, what we mean is that according to the 95 agreement, which is the MRC should come up with joint and basic investment projects for the countries to implement. So these are projects that I will be identified from the basic by point of view to add, to complement national plans. So what countries are not planning? Because what countries are planning, you know, they, they sometimes run into conflict, etc. So, so that is basically what we mean by proactive planning. And we may run out of time uh, because the space is uh, increasingly being shrunk. Uh, and so we, we need to hurry and, and suggest these things. Our coordination of uh, what, well, uh, I think at the minimum, it means uh, sharing information. So different uh, water infrastructure projects share information. Second, uh, timely notify uh, before you uh, say release in an unusual manner. Right? Timely notify. And third, if possible, if possible, uh, have an agreement in terms of coordinate how you're going to release and restrict. So that, that, that you only, not only optimize it for energy production, but also for, say, drought relief, for flood relief, sorry, for, yeah, for flood relief, and for other environmental purposes. Which is a tough decision because you need to sacrifice maybe energy. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, it's, it's better now it's getting dead. We, we understood what was happening to the river, changing the river, and now we're taking more action, bold action, to address those challenges. As the opening remark by, by, by Mr. Pan perceives. So the floor is back to the user team. So because 
Okay, thank you, Sotia. So this in regard is about the monitoring of the BDS. So uh, as I presented to you earlier, we have our uh, state of basic report that is uh, being monitored the basic, basic conditions every five years. And this state of basic report is uh, prepared based on the Mekong indicator parameters. And Dr. Sonam has already highlighted that we have uh, uh, different indicator, uh, different level of indicator, and also monitoring parameter to be collected and, and monitor the conditions. So the BDS is uh, to improve conditions from red uh, color to yellow to green, in, uh, improving the condition of the basin through this state of basin report. And this can be done in this five years. And then for the MRC uh, monitoring on the uh, strategic plans, we will do uh, through our biannual report. That uh, report will be report to uh, report based on the uh, uh, deliverables and uh, activity and deliverable agreed by member countries in the MRC strategic plan. And this will uh, report against the deliverables, and we will do uh, biannually and annually. And then we do uh, also midterm, so every two years and a half, and then the final uh, monitoring of, of the SP. And this will be reported to also uh, legal partner uh, as well. So this, these are the, the monitoring of the BDS and uh, SP. Thank you. Yeah, I th thanks, Leah. I agree with that. Um, Maybe some of you may wonder, why do you have BDS and SP? Right. So uh, the, the BDS, as uh, my colleagues uh, mentioned, it's really targeted to everybody in the basin. So we, and, and we're going to measure how we are successful after five years through the improvement in these state of basin monitoring indicators. For example, the water quality, the flow regime, the environmental assets, the uh, state of the population living around the river, uh, the level of cooperation between member countries. So we will measure this. And it's not up to the MRC to be uh, the only one accountable for the improvement in the state of basin indicators. So that's it. Everybody is accountable. And, and we can only be uh, successful if everyone works together on that. For the SP part, we will be accountable. So the MRC cooperation. So we will produce the guidelines, we will produce the studies, we will produce agreements, we will produce uh, frameworks for cooperation, all of these things. And we'll do our best to facilitate cooperation. And, and we are accountable for that. But the state of the basin is accountable uh, and, and, and responsible by, by everyone involved. Okay, thank you. Aranda, maybe you want to Sure. Uh, in terms of development partners' contributions to the monitoring of the, the BDS and the strategic plan, there's a few areas I think that uh, development partners can be contributing to the, the monitoring uh, of, the, of those uh, important documents. <clears throat> One is through the provision of technical support, uh, such as through the MRC Joint Environmental Monitoring Program, which uh, partners uh, are contributing to the, the MRC. There's also uh, through the partners participation in MRC governance meetings such as the informal development partners meeting and project committee meetings uh, in, in reviewing progress and providing uh, input and feedback. And uh, a third area is, uh, as I mentioned previously, about sharing uh, experiences in our own countries um, monitoring of uh, river basins. So for example in Australia uh, we've been sharing experiences on the Murray Darling uh, Basin Authority and their, their monitoring of the, the river basin uh, through a dashboard system. So that would be a few uh, areas. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we are saying the time is up now. Yeah I think we are running out of time uh, but the if you have some more questions for our college here, we can do so during the break, but let me take this opportunity to thank all of you for your time, for sharing your knowledge, 
your understanding and your expertise with us all here today. And also, I thank our audience very much, the, the ambassador, all the distinguished delegate, ladies and gentlemen here, for sharing with us your questions, for your complimentary uh, words. And thank you, Satya. And it's been Yeah.